preaching. Like you just start preaching and you don't even know it, huh? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna just share it. Jamila Chambers, and I am so excited that you're here worshiping with the Bridge Community Church. We are located here in Los Angeles, California, but we are so excited to be able to share this worship experience with you wherever you are. Before we get started today, I want to invite you to share this content with everyone on your social media platform if you are joining this service live. And if you are experiencing this service through a replay or someone sending you a link, share this word. We are so excited to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to be able to worship with us today. Before we get started as well, I want to make sure that you all know where you can connect with us on all social media platforms at The Bridge Community. We are also available online at thebridgecommunity.com. Now, we want to make sure that you are just sitting back, relaxing, and preparing to experience worship with us today. Let us have a word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you, we bless you, and we honor you today. We thank you, Lord God, for this service, for this time to come together in worship and in fellowship. We ask, Lord God, that you continue to bless every single family under the sound of my voice and meet them at their point of need. Father God, we ask, Lord God, that as the word goes forth today, that it will go forth and pierce the heart of every single listener, Lord God that lives will be changed, that lives will be transformed, Lord God, and that most importantly, that your love will be felt no matter where we are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. And we are so thankful that on today, we have the victory in Christ. Hallelujah. Join in as we declare, hallelujah. And 
death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. Yeah. You see that in majesty, and you are the risen. you know that we have life only because he has given us life because Jesus gave his life. Declare you gave us life Jesus. You gave us life and I believe because you're alive. I'm alive because you're alive. I have peace. I have peace because you're yourself. I am healed because you're alive. I am healed. I am healed because you're alive. And I am healed because you're alive. The enemy has been defeated and death just worship right there if you know that you have life because he give, he's given you life hallelujah because he gave his life hallelujah we have life we have freedom from fear we have freedom from depression oh we thank you Jesus yeah oh have won the victory. Everybody sing a hallelujah. You have won it all for me. You have won Testify that you have won 
Somebody rejoice in the Lord if you know that the battle has already been won. And you are victorious because Jesus is victorious. Hallelujah. Did you on mute? All right. Well, good afternoon, virtual friends and family. I know that you've already been greeted, but I would just like to say welcome, welcome, welcome to our Sunday meetup. We praise God for you being with us today, and we're looking forward to diving more into the word. We would like to thank uh, Minister Ornisha Lowe and her wonderful husband, Anthony, for blessing us in song today. And I believe the atmosphere has been set. I believe the, sage is, the stage has been set for this afternoon's word. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we are in the midst of a series entitled The Great Exchange, The Great Exchange, and this will be our third installment of The Great Exchange. We started this series on Resurrection Sunday, and we will be continuing um, for as long as God kind of keeps us here. The first week on Resurrection Sunday, we talked about um, this Jesus, this Jesus the Christ, that through his love ministers to us by making an exchange with us. On our first installment, I talked about my own testimony in being that Jesus, through his love, at the point of me truly coming to him, coming to him he took my confusion about religion and in turn gave me an authentic relationship with God through him. So that was our first discussion, and in addition, we talked about the thief that was on the cross on that Good Friday, how Jesus ministered to him and made a great exchange by removing that man's shame and giving him um, a first-class reservation in paradise immediately on that very day. And last week, we talked about one of my favorite uh, Bible heroines, the Apostle Peter, and what we found in, again, reviewing um, the occurrences around the time of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, how we found that, that Peter had denied Jesus three times after Jesus had already prophesied that it would happen. But even though Peter denied Jesus three times, uh, what Jesus did, he made a great exchange um, with Peter and in turn he removed Peter's shame for denying him and in turn g gave him an unconditional love and what we talked about last week was a love that covers a multitude of sins so today we're going to dive a little bit deeper in this journey I believe that there's so much revelation and so much to discuss around the events that surround the crucifixion and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and we'll be reading the sixth verse. We'll just be reading one scripture today, and then we'll open with prayer. So Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, And without faith it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Once again, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Father, we just thank you and we honor you. We bless you. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for giving us an opportunity to come together as your children. We thank you, Lord God, for your great love. We thank you for your covering. We thank you, Lord God, for this gathering, Lord God, this virtual gathering that allows us that even though we're in a shelter in place situation, that we can come together as a family to seek you and to understand your word. Father, I'm asking, Lord God, that you would remove every matter of distraction that would try and enter in in this moment. I, Father, I ask that our minds would be clear, that our hearts would be open to receive, and that we would have a focus. Let your word go forth with clarity, with boldness, 
so that eyes can be opened in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. So once again, today, the message is the great exchange, and this is our third installment, our third installment. This opening scripture helps us understand that without faith, it is impossible to believe God. And just to be completely transparent, even in my own journey, I've struggled with believing God in different times in my life, you know, because it's amazing that you can be taught different things from scripture, but when the situations of life come, it puts pressure on you and what you profess to believe. I remember in times of victory, it's easy to stand on a hill and declare the goodness of God. But it's another thing entirely when you're in the valley, possibly mourning something or someone or some circumstance, still declaring the goodness of God. Sometimes we struggle with unbelief and doubt in those moments because sometimes we're trying to understand how can I believe something that you can't see, taste, audibly hear all the time, or even smell? We are challenged to believe in something that we can't always perceive with our senses, especially in difficult times, times of uncertainty, even times like today. Because as we watch our news broadcasts on a daily basis, there's a constant flooding of information. And all of that information is putting pressure on what you think you believe. Our hearts were broken this week when we learned that uh, another two million people had to file for unemployment for the first time. So now we have uh, millions and millions and millions of people that no longer have a, have a, have a, a consistent income stream and now they're having to do what they need to do. Our hearts were broken for them, and it's easy for us to try and empathize with them because, again, at a moment like that, you're thrown into uncertainty. Doubt will begin to come in, almost like a tsunami, like a river. It'll begin to try and wash against your mind and your spirit and your soul, right? So with that, Let's just agree that sometimes it's a struggle to believe in these uncertain times. Sometimes I used to struggle in believing God because all of the stuff that I used to see in my neighborhood when I was a kid and some of the foolishness I would see in churches because I would question like, God, if you're real, why is my community going through all of this chaos and foolishness? Or why are people being mistreated in churches? Of all places, can the church be a safe haven, can be a, a, a place of stability? And in time, God helped me understand. You know, I even heard one of my favorite Bible teachers say within the last few weeks, he said that don't make the mistake in thinking that heaven is on earth. The perfect place is actually heaven, it's not earth. So we can't have an expectation that our life in the earth is gonna be perfect. You got it? That's why we have a blessed assurance that Jesus has made a place for us in eternity. But let me not get sidetracked. What we wanna do today, we're gonna get our camera out and we're gonna zoom in on the life of Thomas. We're gonna zoom in on his life and he's gonna help us understand this battle between belief and unbelief. It's a very interesting discussion. And in that, I, I promise I'll show you when the great exchange takes place for Thomas. We see Thomas introduced in Matthew, the 10th chapter. Thomas was introduced on the scene as being one of Jesus's original crew, you know, so he was like a charter member or a founding member or whatever you want to call it. So he was there with that first 12. He is often referred to as doubting Thomas, but we'll get to that later. Let's try and build up a little bit. You got to imagine if you were Thomas, you had a bird's eye view into the ministry 
of Jesus Christ. You would have saw Jesus raid a, uh, raise a, uh, a paraplegic man. You would have saw Jesus cast out devils. You would have saw Jesus feed thousands of people off of a, a few fish and a few loaves of bread. You would have had a first, a front row seat at Jesus moving in these signs, wonders, and miracles. And again, I, I try and imagine myself being right there because when you're in those moments, it's got to feed your faith. It's just got to stir you up in all of that. Um, so again, Thomas had a bird's eye view, but in St. John, the 11th chapter, we see Thomas say something that was just a little off, okay? Just a little off, and, 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 and what I mean is, he said something that a prized pupil should not say regarding his master, okay? So in St. John, the 11th chapter, in the 16th verse, it says, Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. So let me try and set a little context. So Jesus and his crew was on the way to go see Lazarus. And what Jesus has said is like, you know, y'all be cool. Lazarus is asleep. We're going to go get him up. And what Jesus was all also explaining is that Lazarus was now dead. And Jesus said, we're going to go see him and we're going to get him up. Right. So it's in this exchange with Jesus that Lazarus looks over at the other disciples and say, let us go also and die with him. And as a teacher student, let's just evaluate that from a teacher student perspective. If Jesus said that he was going to raise Lazarus up, why would Thomas sit there and say, let us go die with him? You got it? And, and, and all of us have been in class. Y'all have been in class. You understand that it takes certain students to get the lesson a little bit longer than others, right? And I'm just point that out to show that, you know, there was something maybe a little bit off with Thomas's knower prior to, you know, where we're going. Amen. So, again, we see that Lazarus was just a little off to make that statement. And for those of you who don't know, you can read that entire chapter of St. John, the 11th chapter, and you'll see that Jesus did just what he said he was going to do. He went to the tomb where Lazarus had been buried and he called Lazarus out of the tomb. You know, so again, even in this supernatural occurrence of Jesus raising a dead man to life, Thomas was there. So if Thomas was there, how in the world did Thomas become doubting Thomas? Because you see all of these instances where G Thomas, again, had a front row seat of the ministry of Jesus Christ. So again, how did Thomas earn the moniker Doubting Thomas? Let's flip over in our Bibles to St. John, the 20th chapter in the 19th verse. And this is where we will rest our case. St. John, the 20th chapter in the 19th verse. St. John, the 20th chapter in the 19th verse, it says, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then, they, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Let's hop down to verse 24. But Thomas, somebody say, but Thomas, but Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. I'll say that again. I will not 
believe. So here you have Thomas, here with his, his, his brothers in Christ, his brothers and sisters in the Lord. They had been through a lot together. You know, again, they were at the tomb, they had seen the 5,000, they had seen the demoniac man healed, set free, the whole thing, right? Thomas is going to sit here and raise his mouth to say, guys, I don't believe what you are telling me because the disciples tried to tell him, no, he's alive, man. Our savior is back. He, he, our king is back. Thomas is going to sit there and say, unless I see his hands for myself. In other words, I don't care what you've seen or I don't care about your testimony. I need to have my own encounter with God. He said, unless I place my hand in his side, he didn't say, I'll believe for real. He said, I will never believe. You got to imagine that. You got to imagine that because, again, all of this impartation, all of this investment, all of this shared experience with your brothers and sisters in Christ, it all came down to what was in Thomas's head. It all came down to what was in his head. And we could pause right there because my question to you is, how has what is in your head been getting in between you and your relationship with God? You see, sometimes we think we can outthink our relationship with God or we think that we can outthink the testimony of another person. This is exactly what Thomas was doing. He was putting his foot down and pouting and saying, unless I see it for myself, I'm not going to take your word, nor did Thomas take the teaching that Jesus had already provided him. Because you got to understand, Jesus told all of the disciples that he was going to die and rise again. But again, here we have Thomas, doubting Thomas. Y'all asked how did he get the moniker doubting? This is how we got it. Me and my wife, we like to have a term that we like to share. It's one thing to be strong, right? It's another thing to be strong and wrong. Or let me say that another way. It's one thing to be wrong because sometimes people are wrong because they haven't been taught or they didn't hear it or they just don't know. But it's another thing when you are aggressively wrong, that's being strong and wrong. And that is exactly what Thomas was doing. And, and again, why I use that analogy is Thomas was the one that said, I will never believe. I will never believe. I don't care what you've said. I don't care what you've experienced. I will never believe. That's how he got the moniker, Doubting Thomas. But the story didn't end there. Let's hop down to verse 26. Somebody say good news. And after eight days, and again, I'm in, still in St. John, the 20th chapter. I'm in the 26th verse. It says, and after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Watch this. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. There goes our word peace. But that's another message. Verse 27. And then said to Thomas, reach here thy finger and behold my hands and reach here thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing verse 28 and thomas answered and said unto him my lord my god this passage of scripture is amazing to me because we see watch this jesus meeting thomas at the place of his weakness that's the type of loving father that we have because he's telling you even now, if you're listening to this, he's not worried about your head trips. 
He's willing to go exactly to where you are with all of your head trips, with all of your fear, with all of your unbelief. And he's saying, I will meet you right there. That's what happened with Thomas, because Jesus, he leaned into the conflict. Right. But watch this. He didn't lean into the conflict with rebuke. He leaned in with love. You got it? Because again, and that's what we talked about uh, last week, Peter's revelation was um, love covers a multitude of sins because again, that's why we read Hebrews the 11th chapter. It's impossible to please God without faith. So here you have Jesus, he leans in to Thomas. In other words, I know what you have been saying. I know the evidence that you need to believe, so here you go. He took his hands and put them in his hands. There go the holes. He said, reach here. Here goes the wound in my side. And that is where the great exchange took place. That's what's so powerful about God is that God will orchestrate a personalized experience for you. That's why I'm amazed at this technology even now, because many of y'all think, well, hey, if I got to go to church, guess what? I'm not going to church. Now God is saying, no, I'm going to come to your home. I'm going to come to your car. I'm going to come to the hotel room. I'm going to come on the street corner. I'm going to come exactly where you are and throw you a lifeline, regardless of what you've said about God your whole life. No matter what you said about Jesus the Christ your whole life, he's saying, no, Thomas, I'm coming to you. And whatever evidence you need to believe, I'm going to provide the evidence. That is the God that we serve. Jesus met Thomas not only at the place of his weakness, he met Thomas at the place of his unbelief. Watch this. Jesus took his unbelief and gave him faith. Y'all got to hear me. He took his, um, that's the exchange now. Because again, when Jesus comes, he doesn't come to show off. He doesn't come to sound cute. He comes to make an exchange. And he desires to make that same exchange with you right now in the name of Jesus. If you're struggling with any matter of unbelief right now, he's saying, look at Thomas's life. You see the character of Jesus. That's the other thing. Sometimes some of these preachers, they give God a bad name because here we're seeing the character of Jesus. We're seeing his love. We're seeing his heart because, again, he didn't come to Thomas and just rebuke the guy immediately. See, how dare you question me? He didn't do that. He said, Thomas, what do you need to believe? Because we have a kingdom to further extend. We have a New Testament church to, to establish. The persecution must come so you guys can be dispersed into all the world. Jesus knew that this thing was greater than the offense that Thomas had issued his way. That's the character of Jesus. So for you as well. You may have trespassed against God. You may have trespassed against the name of Jesus. But what God is saying right now, he's saying none of that matters. If you need to touch his hands, he's OK with that. If you need to touch his side, he's OK with that. He is willing to wait for you as long as it takes. That's what's amazing. Travis Green, one of our favorite worship leaders, he has a song called He Waited. And that song is just, again, about the love of God in that he waited. He's willing to wait for you. God waited for me until I was a grown man to fully come to him. He spared my life more than once. And again, he waited until I came. And I praise God that he waited for me. The same is true for you. If we want to look at the character of Jesus, we are looking at the character of Jesus We've looked at his interaction with the thief. We've looked at him with his interaction, what? With Peter. Now we're, we're seeing the, the character of Jesus as he's interacted with Thomas. How many of you have been pouting like Thomas? Today is your day of the great exchange. Today is your day in the midst of your situation, your dilemma, 
Today is your day of the great exchange. You may be wondering what happened after the great exchange for Thomas, because in scripture, we don't see a whole lot about Thomas. We do see Thomas in the upper room. We do see that in the book of Acts. And again, we're leading up to the road of Pentecost. We're going to get there. But we do see Thomas in the upper room when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was poured out. Thomas was there. He said, guess what? My faith is not going to fail me because I've seen my master. So we see Thomas, watch this, in the upper room. And some historians have said that Thomas's ministry landed him in the southwestern coast of India, where he began to what? Preach the gospel and build churches. That's why Jesus watched it. That's why Jesus was willing to wait. Your destiny may be tied to this encounter with Jesus that you need to have. And that's our prayer today. Is that through the simplicity of the gospel. That you can have your own encounter with Jesus. As we're talking about encounter, I'm reminded. Of of the Apostle Paul, his encounter with Jesus. The Apostle Paul was a persecutor of the New Testament church. He was all about killing these new believers because they represented a change and a shift. But eventually Paul had his encounter on the road to Damascus. Today, I believe that somebody listening by way of this stream, it's their time for an encounter. As we pray today, we're praying that your encounter would bring about a transformation in your life. Maybe you're already walking with God, but I believe an encounter is needed. I believe not only an encounter, an encounter so a great exchange can take place. There's something that you are wrestling with or that is wrestling with you that God wants to remove. He not only wants to remove it, he wants to replenish it with him. That's why he said, I came so that you can have life and life in abundance. The life that God wants you to live will not be complete until there's a greater level of exchange. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we honor you. We bless you. Father, we thank you for giving us this time to come together. I thank you, Lord God, for the listeners today. I thank you, Lord God, that even now, by way of prayer, that doubt and unbelief is being removed from their lives in the name of Jesus. Father, I don't care what situation they're in. I don't care if they're on a hospital bed, that doubt and unbelief and fear is being removed now in the name of Jesus. I don't care what the bill collectors are saying. I don't care what the newscast is saying. I decree and I declare that doubt and unbelief is being removed. And Father, I declare that an exchange is taking place just like it did for Thomas. That Father, you are releasing a faith unto them, a faith, Lord God, that's going to transform their very lives. Father, that that faith, Lord God, that measure of faith, that measure of encouragement, Lord God, that you're going to put on the inside of them, it's going to cause them to see differently in the name of Jesus. It's not only going to cause them to see differently, it's going to cause them to hear differently in the name of Jesus. Father, they're going to be able to walk with you in a greater level. Father, I declare that your voice is going to be louder than all of this background noise. Father, you said in your word that as many uh, are the sons of God are led uh, by your spirit. Father, I'm asking that they would be led in this season of uncertainty. Father, I declare their homes are covered, that their bodies are covered, that their families are covered. That even though weapons have formed, I declare that they shall not prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, just beckon them into a deeper relationship with you. 
Father, those that need to confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior for the first time, let them do so now in the name of Jesus. Those that need to rededicate their lives unto you, let them do so now in the name of Jesus. And we will rejoice in knowing, Father, that you are the head of their life and that you would never leave them nor forsake them. In the matchless name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. And praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, we praise God for you listening today. We praise God for the decisions that you have just made. And we believe that God is gonna honor your decisions. I would encourage you to get connected to a local church or get connected to a virtual church, a virtual community like the Bridge Community. We would love to partner with you. We would love to disciple you. We would love to just pour into your life so that we can experience more of God together as a family. A couple quick announcements. One announcement on Friday, May 1st at 6.30 Pacific Standard Time, we're gonna have a new membership virtual meeting. This new membership virtual meeting is gonna be held on Zoom and it's gonna give you guys an opportunity to formally cut covenant with the Bridge community. We understand that we're shelter in place and we understand some of you live in different areas, but regardless of your address, we wanna be here to receive you formally into our church family. There will be a registration link that is posted in the comments below. You do have to RSVP to attend this Zoom meeting because we want to make the right preparations um, to receive you. Second announcement is we thank each and every one of you that have partnered with us financially. Your giving has been amazing. It has exceeded our expectation and we want to ask you to continue to partner with us because we are building a church that we believe is going um, to bless a number of people. So there's some information on the screen in which you'll be able to give and partner with us. And our last announcement is our virtual Bible study is gonna be held on Tuesday, April 28th at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard. And again, that's gonna be via Zoom and um, we'll, we'll post a graphic in the comments below that will show you how you could uh, hop on that Zoom call. It's been intimate settings. We've been getting deep into the word and we actually been talking about a crisis toolkit. Um, so, and we've really been enjoying that. So we wanna invite you to be a part of that as well. So with that, we will say have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon and we praise God for your life and we will continue to pray for you and pray for us. God bless you and have a wonderful day.